last time on Knights of the Roll Table, Kishora sends the Kulsatori Constructs to fetch our heroes from the den of the late Gus Thorak. She imprisons them inside of suits of armor and is about to transform them into yon when our herd, or would it be pack, of Korkian-fused horses and former allies come in the nick of time to save them. The ring controlling the Kulsatoris is captured, and the tide of battle changes. Our heroes now race after Kishara towards Dagger Island to stop her nefarious plot. You are headed towards Dagger Island. It's about a two-hour flight. It's about a two-hour flight. Drinks will not be provided. <laughs> Captain, experience some turbulence. <laughs> Captain, uh, right Captain side. by Captain Sarsa Demisalt. What would you guys like to do along the way before you get to Dagger Island? Um, it is about midday because it took you a little bit of time to get out of the cave. You started kind of like the beginning of the day in the midst of Gus Thorak's lair and all of the Kulsatories that kind of took you out. And uh, it's about midday, a little afternoon. It'll take a couple hours to get to Dagger Island. So since uh, Jarek is not on the plane with us. <laughs> he's not on the Aerovan. <laughs> he's not on the Aerovan. He's flying he's near- really you guys. He's flying nearby. <laughs> there is <laughs> enough. Yeah. We're really low now. <laughs> um, what Sarsa would like to do is uh, I had originally given the other sending stone to Silius, mm-hmm. but I think she'd take that back from him and chuck it at Jarek so that that way if we get separated. Oh, no, so I will say there. there is enough room for Porto and Jarek to land on the Aerovan. It's essentially just a giant like yeah, pontoon boat. But also... If somebody was dumb enough to get separated, it'd probably be Jarek. So yeah. thank but, you very much. But do you want to throw it to him <laughs> while nope, flying hundreds of feet? <laughs> okay. Okay. Then I so land Jarek sense. lands on oh, the ship. Jarek, get your butt down here and I'm going to give you a sending stone in case you get lost. Okay, really, coming. Gosh, you guys. We have to get going. Shar's getting away. <laughs> we are going. Well you're you're mid going down. flight. You're you're flying. It's while we're traveling, we're doing it's just preparing so that we don't go in. You know, we have every advantage because we're going to need it all. I know, I'm just nervous. All right. Do we rest and recover and patch wounds and stuff on our way? Does, Can it, we? does it take an hour? <clears throat> it'll take hours? it'll be at least two hours. Can we take a short rest? And rest yeah. and recover you can take and a short rest. Wounds. Okay. Go ahead and take a short rest. Porto, do your rest mode. Porto. Rest deploy. <laughs> as soon as you, you kind of say rest mode, and, and as soon as you do, it kind of like sits down mm-hmm. and the wings collapse around it and it sort of becomes this egg shape. Oh, cool. and, it goes, and you hear... <laughs> I hate that bird. Is there a little like charging indicator on the front? <laughs> it's kind of like a, a slit down the center vertically and it, and it uh, glows purple. Now what do you lot, what do you think that... Uh, Old Kishara, what do you think she's looking to, to accomplish with those curios? She said it was a personal matter, right? Well, even without them, she managed to bring back all those Yanti. So I can't even imagine what she's going to be able to do with the curios all together. Does anyone know of any significance of Dagger Island? It appears to be shaped like a dagger. I said significance. Well, <laughs> I have no idea. Know. Would Silius know anything from... Make a Lord. history check. All right. History or investigation? I'm going to let you choose. Probably history knowing him. Yeah, we'll go with history. And it is a nat 20. Hey. Oh. Plus four would be 24. You smile. All right. Um, so, Silius, you think about something. You've been looking at this, your, your book of the realms for mm-hmm. months. And Dagger Island, as soon as you say Dagger Island, wait. It sparks something in you, and you remember a passage, not about Dagger Island, but but a landmark from Marcasia that's on Dagger Island. And you flip to that page. Oh, that was convenient. <laughs> Wait, I remember. <laughs> flip, flip, flip. There's, there's a place called Numina Tower. It's located on, the, on Dagger Island off the coast of Marcasia. It's one of the oldest relics left standing from the age of the heavens. It is sealed on all sides, and there is no entrance. 
According to the writings from the Age of the Heavens, there was a beacon that allowed one to not only communicate with the gods, but ask them for a favor. The writings also said that the beacon was dormant, and without a powerful source of psionic energy, it would not be able to be used. That's got to be where she's going. It must be. She, she's going to have them wipe out all of hum, all, all, all of non yuan T. And we'll do everything that we can to stop her. Wait, psionic. Wait, wasn't wasn't Ramara psionic? So you so you guys know from hanging out with Ramara, from dealing with some of the Duragar, uh, from dealing with Gastorak, and also from dealing with a lot of night crystal technology that night crystals themselves emit a kind of psionic energy and uh, unrefined and powerful items made with night crystals also emit a very raw and un, uh, unbridled uh, psionic energy. So the three curios together being legendary items as they are um, is a very powerful source of psionic energy channeled into a weapon. We have to stop her. She's going to ask the gods for a favor. Um, we Do can they ask- have to grant it? It doesn't say. Well... <laughs> Sarsa. Sarsa. is going to pull out the stone. Sarsa, Sarsa. Uh, Sarsa, hello? Bartleby, is that you? Yeah, uh, I made another sending stone. I, I, uh, I, I wanted that. To, I wanted to stay in touch. Uh, you hear, like, kind of battling in the background, some swords Are you and okay? stuff like that. Oh, you do oh, yeah, right. I, I'm being surrounded by a couple of uh, 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 um right now, and they're, they're protecting us. It looks like we're going to win uh, this, this battle. Um, I just wanted to kind of check and see how you guys are, but I also... Um, uh, oh, uh, Cole says hi, by the way. I don't know what that means. Oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> Say hi for me, too. Uh, okay. Uh, Derek says hi. <laughs> he shook his head. And, Say hi for me, too. Oh, Coach says hi, too. Okay, nothing. Um, listen, uh, it looks like uh, we're making a dent in their forces. Uh, it just took a minute to figure out how to use the, the uh, Cole Satori's, but it looks like we're going to win on this battle. But listen, I remembered something I wanted to warn you about, the Curios. Uh, Silius might know this, but um, they have another name. Uh, when it's combined, it's called the God's Key. That's not it, good. It, it, there's some sort of activation sequence uh, of some kind. I, I have no idea what it is. It's three steps. But uh, I, in my research, because I'm a big fan of Voop Dadu, I mean, he's such an amazing inventor. Uh, he was such uh, an amazing inventor. And, 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 and in my research, uh, I couldn't find anything about how to activate it, you know, if when the curios were combined. But, I mean, that's assuming they were even real. But you guys found them. It's amazing. Good job, by the way. I never really got to see hey, Get to the point, Bartleby. We don't have much time. Well, if, I don't know if, there, if there's something in that Salias might know or something that you guys find or some way that you can just mess around with it. If you get the curios, maybe you can you, use that to your advantage. I don't know. I mean, there's some way to activate it. And, and, and Kishara might not know that. That's, that's all I got. I mean, I just remember much that. if we don't have the curios, but I appreciate you giving us that information. Thank you, Bartleby. Yeah, and oh, don't forget, that Cole said something about the Dendar the Night Serpent. Um, it, it has something to do with the Yuan T. Uh, that's all I have for you. Hi. Sorry. Uh, good luck, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bartleby. You stay safe, all right? Uh, will do. Tell Cole I look forward to catching up over a pint. <laughs> She says she looks forward to... Oh, he's really busy fighting right now. <laughs> Jarek. <laughs> and it kind of fuzzes out. All right, uh, after hearing the phrase, God's key, uh, I think Silius would go to the book and see if he could find anything. With with your original nat 20 roll, mm-hmm. um, you kind of put two and two together and figure out that the combined curios is referring to the God's key, um, or the God's key is referring to that. Right. The Godski is referring to the combined curios. Um, but what Bartleby mentioned also makes you look up. There is a passage on Dendar, the night serpent. Ah. So you kind of flip to that. Wow, knowledge <laughs> is power. See, this is why you need to learn to read. <laughs> is there a picture of him? Listen, I can read most words, the small ones. I was talking to Coach. <laughs> oh. He still thinks I can't read. Well, can you? Uh, are you serious? <laughs> All right, I'll read this to you. Dendar was a colossal serpent who spent her time devouring the nightmares and fears of both the mortals and immortals in hopes of bringing about the end of the world. 
That oh no! Sound like a pretty yeah. She was some three hundred feet long, with blue black scales, yellow eyes, and a huge maw filled with four fangs, spittle, and the bones of some of her former victims. There's a footnote here. No, <laughs> uh, the night serpent was able to use her enormous size to crush victims below her bulk or to swallow them whole. Her forked tongue could be used to trip and entangle victims, whom she could then inject with a sleep poison, so she could absorb their nightmares. She sounds terrifying. So that's what she's bringing back. Uh, Sars is gonna excuse herself and go take a moment on the bow of the ship to pray to Saloon for guidance. Okay. Don't worry, I will steer. Don't Jerk, touch it. Jarek steers a bit. <laughs> just straight, all right? Got what it. are you? No left, no right. Whoa. Whoa. Straight on. One what? direction. I will not move anything. I am capable. Jarek invents turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say to Saloon? Saloon, I, I trust in you. I trust in your mercy. And I'm going to do my best to try and keep the world a beautiful place but but we're going up against some some big bad nasties right here and and well anything you can do to help would be greatly appreciated I, I, I'm not perfect I'm not always smart I don't always do the right thing but I'm really trying but darndest right now so any anything you got for me I I'd, oh, I'd be mighty grateful roll a percentage die Uh, it's a little afternoon, so it's still kind of sunny out. There's a couple clouds in the sky. You guys are flying a few hundred feet above, and you're approaching the edge, the west coast of Marcasia. Dagger Island is not quite yet in sight. All you see is ocean. And you get almost a relaxing feel, even though there's a lot of tension in the air and you're flying towards what probably is your certain doom. But seeing the ocean brings some calm back to you. And from behind a cloud, you can actually see the moon. At the same time that the sun is out, a little bit in a different part of the sky, you see a tiny crescent moon with a silver edge to it. All of you get a, a D4 Woo! of extra hit points. Ooh. Nice. <clears throat> she doesn't say anything to you, but you feel something that there is there is a something that's looking out for you and something that's going to be with you on this journey. Yeah. Do you so, guys feel that? I didn't. I just steered straight. I didn't do anything. I didn't hit anything. <laughs> I. Just steered straight. So I was going to come back to the group and say, Jarek, you did good. I'm proud of you. Thanks. All right, you lot. So, so Let's yes. do this thing. So yes, uh, you're still looking at the book. You're looking at all these in, this information. What Bartleby said about finding some sort of activation sequence, mm -hmm. I need you to make an investigation check. That's uh, 14 plus 1 is 15. Okay. You are flipping through. For the rest of the time that you're in this airship, you start seeing the, the small glimpse of a shape of a landmass approaching, and it's getting closer and closer. Um, but before it, it gets too big, um, you actually find some runes inscribed in the spine of the very last page oh. of this book. And it's handwritten. It's not printed. Some of the book is is handwritten, but most of it's just printed in some sort of print technology. Um, but this was actually written, and it's in Dwarvish. Do you speak Dwarvish? I do. It says three words. Bash, twist, pull. It's a bop it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I found the steps. Either that or that's a good Friday night. <laughs> All right, Dagger Island is getting a little bit bigger and bigger. Uh, you see the kind of pointed uh, southern edge 
which is where the blade of the dagger would be. Um, you do see, uh, as you're approaching, um, there's a mountain ridge on the west kind of edge of it. Um, it's mostly kind of this black sand, um, darker uh, rock. Not a very friendly place. There's not a ton of trees, any kind of vegetation, and trees is mostly kind of almost like desert-like. Um, a lot of rocks, a lot of uh, 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 dead trees and, and, and um, uh, gnarled tumbleweeds and things like that. You do see in kind of the center of sort of where the hilt meets the blade, there is a large stone obelisk tower uh, that's sticking up. And it's very foggy. All of the ground around this area is covered in fog. Uh, this is probably the Numina Tower that is referred to in the book. You probably see about two miles because you're w really high up. Two miles to the east, you see a small uh, ship docked. And this is probably uh, Kishara's speedy airship. Does it look manned or does it look like there's nobody at it? It's very, very hard to tell from this far up. Okay, do you guys think there's any chance that the god's key is like a, maybe she just wants to go on like a winter fun vacation? Could it just be like the ski of the gods? Are we zero chance. All right, I think well. there's zero chance of that. No, that's I true. like she your express optimism, herself very well. No. All right, well, I'm just keeping an open mind. You guys, should we, you think we can dock by the tower over there or should we go into the airship? I think we should use whatever's available to us. Listen, if you want some cover, I could cast a spell so we get a nice layer of fog so they can't see us approaching. And we could approach uh, the ship, board it, and at least make sure that she's not able to leave before we get in that there tower. I like that idea. How sturdy does the tower look? From up here, you can't really see too much, but it looks... <sighs> It looks like a very thick stronghold, and and as you're getting closer now, you're like 200 feet. It's it's uh it's very old. Just the architecture. You're, you're stone cunning mm -hmm. as a dwarf. You know, you, you, it's not your favorite subject in school, but uh, you you kind of recognize this is a. Uh, I've never seen something like this, and I've heard about it, but it's like very old, ancient technology, like like architecture, and it's pretty sturdy. What if we rammed it? The tower? If her ship is really fast, if we can take the, the tower down, it, it's over, right? You want to ram the tower with her ship? Yeah. Whatever it takes. If we can avoid fighting Kishara, we can take down the tower in addition to that. I mean, I do like to make a big entrance. Jarek is good at crashing things. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing my strengths. <laughs> Listen, Stop nobody saying. appreciates you more than I do. I, thanks. I, I know it's a crazy idea, but... I mean, this is one of the oldest relics. It, is that okay? We'd be destroying an, a, a landmark. History! We'd be destroying something with the capacity to end the world. I don't really see a downside there, Silius. That's because you're not as cultured as I am, but you're probably right. <laughs> Listen, if the world ends, there's no culture left. I mean, this is certainly one of those moments that's going to make history. Couldn't we ram it with the ship we're already on? How do we get out? Yeah, I mean... Well, I, I have an idea about that. We, we have the bird. I Jared mean, this could one's smaller if we can take the other ship. We still have a way out. And I can get away on Porto, right? Yeah. Are there other crew members on, on board our ship? Nope. So we could land, drop us all off, Jared could get back up... Plot a course straight at the tower and then fly away on Porto. Do you really think, though, that a small ship like this ramming it in will take down that dirt tower? I mean, we don't know what kind of magical effects. I mean, if it's literally got a god's key. No, I think the god's key is needed to activate it. Not it is. It does not have a god's key. And I, I don't know where it's located. I mean, I don't see any windows or anything on the tower. Porto, activate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love that thing. All right, can you give me some uh, fog cover to maybe get onto the ship? I won't have to be there long, even if it's manned. Well, I can, if you'd like, I can either give you fog or I can uh, create uh, fog all around that ship so they won't see it coming. Yeah, that'd be good. All right, how big is her ship? It is about 10 feet wide and 
by 40 feet and 10 feet high. Okay. Um, so just to give a little bit of, of spell text, I have Fog Cloud as a first level spell. You create a 20 foot radius sphere of fog centered on a point within range. The spear spreads sp- spreads around corners and the area is heavily obscured um, and it'll last for up to an hour concentration. Um, I can cast it at like each spell level that I raise it, I get an additional 20 feet radius of fog. So I could do it as a second level spell and get us 40 feet of fog that would pretty much cover the whole ship. Mm-hmm. How close do you have to be? I got to 120 feet. They'd probably see us coming. That's the ship that we flew before that she loaned us. So we are familiar with it and what's there and stuff. Okay. Well, if we cast it on our I ship, it, it, we, it's a, I flew it, that previously. It's the it. wyvern, and this. you renamed it the wyvern smasher. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate. <laughs> I mean, otherwise we could just go straight to the tower, and just bring the fight straight there. Does it look like there's any openings in the tower? Well, from the from the reading that Salias had, it said it's there is no. It's sealed on all sides, and there's no entrance. But we could make one. Mm-hmm. Can can we see any? I mean, we're up high, so I imagine the answer to this is no. But can we see any activity between that ship and the tower? Like, can we tell where the? It is obscured in fog on the ground. So the fog is hiding it from us. Okay. So we don't know where Kishara is. Nope. Okay. You don't see anything. Gotcha. All right. Well, I have a standing stone, ascending stone, and a big metal bird. So I'm gonna hop on it and head down, head towards the ship. Right. Jarek, you don't do anything more stupid than usual, are you? I mean, on the scale of stupid plans, I feel like we're pretty far up there. Go scope it out, Jarek, and tell me what you see. I'm going to go. I'll meet go you ahead. guys over there. Scout it out. We'll head to the tower. If you end up right. needing fog so cover, we'll, just let we'll, us know. We'll okay. just, uh, we're going to go around like the backside of the tower and kind of try to keep the mountains between us and their ship until we get to the other side of the tower. And we're going to try and approach it from that opposite side. So the tower is between us and their ship and where Jarek is headed. What if we fly right above the tower and just <laughs> rappel down the rope onto the top of the tower? We'd just be there waiting when they get there. I can't imagine the roof would be very... I mean, if, if the rest of the building's all messed up, if it's old, the the roofing couldn't be that that well kept, right? Of maybe course, we could break into the roof. If Jarek's going to crash into the tower, maybe we shouldn't be on it. I say that we don't go down at all. I say that we try and enter the tower first from the air. Yeah, let's and we can scope it out. I think it's a good idea for us to have surveillance before we go barging in head first. So that's what we're gonna do, Chris. Yeah, we'll kind of get right up on the tower and scope it out as best as we can. We can use our magic rope. Well, we're in our flying ship. Okay. So tell me where, where you want to fly. So everybody's on the ship still. Yeah. Nope. No, Jarek is oh, left. Jarek left. To scope out the other ship. Okay, and then you guys are flying towards near the tower just to get close yeah, to it. Yeah, we're basically little... going up the left side of the island opposite, the opposite side of what where her ship is at and approaching that tower but staying above it. And okay, how we... far are you from the tower? Well, it, I mean, as as close as we need to get to really be able to see details, see if we see anybody down there as much. See as the we condition can. of the roof. Our goal is to get on the roof. So you're going to slowly approach. I'd say at about 150 feet, uh, you can see more structural details about the tower. There are no windows. There's no doors. Uh, it's the like first the haunted mansion. The first. Um, 40 feet of the tower are covered in fog, so you can't see the bottom. Okay. Uh, you can see the top. It is a uh, square tower um, that goes up, and on the roof, there there is um, one door. It uh, looks like a kind of a flat trap door um, that, that's uh, on the top. I see a door. Let's go there. Wait, but we haven't heard anything from Jarek yet. So meanwhile... Jarek is on Porto, and you fly down, and you land. Where do you land? Uh, on the ship or near the ship? Who do we know left on the ship with Kishara? She took some of her snake dudes. So, yeah. So, you remember two guys. You remember this guy. Uh, he is a yuan T Melison. Uh, he has legs. He has a kind of a cobra head with a snake body, and then, you know, covered in scales. And then you also saw the pit master, the pit master. who who is Whip who guy. has who has 
uh, snakes for arms and is covered in tattoos and, and such. And Hot. All right, I'm going to use my Mask of Many Faces ability to cast Disguise Self on myself and make myself look like the Pit Master. Okay. The Pit Master. All right. Coming to the CW. On approach, do I see anybody on the ship? Is there any movement there? There is no movement on the ship. Well, we're going to fly down and... Uh, try to land as close as possible to the steering area. Okay. Try so, to steal it. Okay. And I'll use, on approach, like right before I get there, I'll use the stone, say, uh, are you Are you landing on the ship or near it? Wait, does the stone only work once or is it an ongoing thing? Uh, it's, it's ongoing. Okay. So like a walkie-talkie. All right, I don't see anybody on there. You hear me? Aye, hey, Jerrick, I hear ya. You, you doing okay? Uh, I don't see anybody on there. Uh... I'm going to steal it. All right. Uh, that's great. It looks like there's a trap door here at the, the top of the tower. Okay. Well, look for a good place for me to crash a giant airship because well, hopefully not need I'll be to there crash in a few minutes. It. He could probably just come on in. We can go inside. I was really kind of excited to crash it. Maybe just... he can crash it into the ground near the ship and it will hit somebody. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know if landing an airship is really in my uh, expertise. <laughs> That's why I, I was confident crashing I could it. crash it. Make a really, really good point. All right, well, sure. I'll talk to you in a few minutes, hopefully. Uh, oh, Jerk, out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How do I turn this thing off? <laughs> <laughs> you just hear him, like, breathing. <laughs> you kind of just put it in a, a little bag, a little uh, pocket. We're just mm-hmm. hearing... <laughs> Sounds like a butt dial. <laughs> <laughs> how do I how do I operate this thing? Oh, wait, wait, steering wheels. Okay. Yeah, I'm landing the bird on the ship near the steering wheel, the helm. Near the helm. Near the helm. Yes. yes. Sure. So I can take it. So you land the bird on the ship uh, near the helm. You hop off Porto. You kind of walk towards the uh, steering, steering wheel kind of the, of the ship. You realize you don't, Really know anything about flying a ship? Uh, make a. I've seen Sarsa do it. You've seen Sarsa How do hard it. Could it be? Make an intelligence check. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Hey. All of the ships in Marcasia are activated by night crystals, and there's a sequence of activation that is done uh, to get the ship to start. Um, series of switches and, and kind of turning it on. Um, as it were. So you would need to do that in order to get this ship off the ground. Uh, hey, Bartleby, uh, are you there? Bartleby, paging uh, Mr. Bartleby. Anybody? Nope, nothing. Uh, Porto, you're smart. You were built by a smart guy. Uh, you know what to do here? Kind of right. just kind of looks at you, blinks like... Good talk. Uh, all right. I could pick it random, or... Sarsa? Yeah. yeah. Sarsa. Yeah, it was taking you so long. We're waiting here. Uh, how, what, where's the on button? What do I push here? Now, does Sarsa... I, I assume uh, I Sarsa know. flew it before. Flew it. Yeah. All right. So you know um, from... So you're going to start. You're going to look. Uh, there, there's a big purple crystal mm-hmm. uh, to the, towards the right of the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. You're going to go ahead and give that, give that a little tap. Tap. Now you're going to make sure you got your sails up. You got your sails up. You, you know what that looks like, right? Those are big, tall things with yes. big canvas-looking things on them. Are the sails up? Right. They're not. Dang. <laughs> right. So what you're going to do is that you're going to, you're going to find some rope. Like there's yourself. some rope over there. You're going to. <laughs> this is typically a two-person thing to lift up the sails because there's um, the, the sails where you have to kind of tie them off. So. Jarek. No. It's <laughs> <laughs> so you attempt to by yourself get the sails. Uh, make a dexterity check with de- disadvantage. Thirteen. It is not enough. <sighs> This is a this is one of those ships that and you remember this Sarsa if you communicate this to her this is one of those ships that it does require at least four people. It's making some sort of a buzzing sound. Is that... <laughs> Every moment that we waste here is tight the Kishar. No, no, no. Wait, get... wait, 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 wait. All right, new new plan. I'm gonna I'm just gonna wreck it here. All right. And I uh, take out Javadriel and uh, start cutting ropes and wrecking things. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna wreck it. <laughs> All right. Um, can you be quick about that, though? We're waiting on you over here. Make a uh, roll a percentage die for me. 39. Okay, you do some decent damage. Um, it's still, yeah, I mean, it, it might fly, but it's definitely not going to fly straight. There's a lot of ropes flying around. Um, there's some tears in the sails. All right, well, I 
guess this didn't work. Jack, hurry up. Let's get, let's do what we can to get in there. All right. Well, I leave. Hey, uh, hop on Porto and then uh, head back out. Meanwhile, back at the other airship, the Aravan. Uh, Coach is getting the rope ready to kind of descend off the airship okay. onto the, the roof. Remember when you could fly? Yeah, those were good times. I kind of missed that. I'm not going to lie. I still dream about it at night. And uh, flying's kind of the coolest thing ever, guys. It, it really is. So you're landing on the roof of the tower? Yeah. Okay. You Are you kind of like scooting down the rope or, or just are, are you guys lowering him down? I'm making a bit of a show of it. I'm going, <laughs> hand over hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no legs at all. Just <laughs> oh, hand under hand. Okay. Yeah. All hand upper under body strength. You're going down, and you get to where um, you're going to drop uh, on the roof, and you drop down on the roof. Thump. As soon as your foot hits the roof, oh no! You notice, oh, there's something underneath my foot, uh, like a rune, a glyph of some kind. Hey guys, there's a thing under my foot. <laughs> Oh, All of a no. sudden, you guys hear this too? loud, cacophonous thunder. Um, Coach, you take 25 thunder damage. Uh, are you guys okay? And you are flung off the roof, and you are falling. Hello, Knights at the Roll Table. This is Chris Daly, your Dungeon Master for Season 2 of the podcast. We hope you enjoyed the holiday episodes. Jeff did an amazing job putting together an original holiday one shot. Well, this is it. This is part one of the finale of season two. I hope you all have enjoyed the season and the show as much as I have DMing. Next week, we'll post part two, episode 16, and that will be the finale. Then we'll post a postseason wrap up bonus episode where we talk about uh, our favorite moments and whatnot. After that, we're going to post a Session Zero for Season 3. This will also be kind of a how-to have a Session Zero episode, and we'll discuss good things to do during that initial pre-campaign launch. Zach is taking back the DM's chair, and we'll be revisiting some characters from Season 1 and meeting some new characters as well. Mm. After that, we'll start Season 3. So it's going to be a fun 2020 with lots of new content. Something else that's happening this week is our very own Matt Messerman will be on Super Geeked Up, which is a live streaming show that's all things nerdy, and uh, it's kind of like improv and geeky stuff meet together. Uh, you can see him at supergeekedup.com, where you can watch and chat. Uh, that'll be January 1st, and it's on every Wednesdays at 8. Um, go to supergeekedup.com, and you can see previous episodes uh, on their YouTube at Super Geeked Up. So check out Matt and uh, wish him well, and you can make fun of him all you want. Since we don't advertise for the show, the best way to support us is leave a rating and review on whatever podcast service you are listening to right now. It only takes a minute, and you don't even have to write something. Just a rating is appreciated. You can follow me at Daily Tunes RPG on Twitter. Yeah, I changed it. I do all the art for the show and reach out if you want to talk DM stuff or D&D art stuff. Weston also changed his business name to Arcane Anthems. It is up now and live on Patreon, and we featured some of the music you can get from it in the show. It's something you can use in your D&D home campaigns or in your actual play podcast. Check it out in the links in the comments. That's the new original music on Patreon, Arcane Anthems. You can visit our Instagram and our Twitter at Rolled Table and use the hashtag Rolled Table to help us get the word out about the show. Finally, if you have any feedback or questions or want to put an ad on the show, contact us at Knights of the Roll Table at gmail.com. We know we are not the only DD actual play podcast out there, so we really honestly thank you so much for listening and giving us a chance. Happy holidays and a happy new year. Ah! Fly, fly down. We have to get Coach before he falls. Fly faster than the than, than his terminal velocity before it is terminal. Um, um, I used, um, I used um, to have several things that would work for this, but not, not anymore. <laughs> Can I try and pull like the pick out of my bag or something and like try and like glide my way toward the side of the um? 
throw the side of the tower and like sure. stick my pick in the yeah in the stonework. Um, make I'm raging, by the way. <laughs> okay, all right. So it's not with advantage; it's with disadvantage. So it's going to equal out. So just make an attack roll. Am I adding anything to it? Add your proficiency. Uh, dirty twenty. Okay. <laughs> And and you kind of are hanging there with one arm, with uh, your with uh. your metal arm, your metal forearm, and it's gripping super tight on your on your pick with your pitons are kind of activated, and uh, you're hanging about thirty feet above the top, right on the lo- right on the level where the fog is. So you're kind of almost like standing on the fog, kind of holding on with one arm uh, on the side of this building. Am I able to maneuver the ship to try and get down as close to him as possible, maybe I'll, even right underneath him? I'll say yes, you can get on alongside, okay. at least to where like the rope is uh, yeah. grabbable. Yeah. Uh, Sars is going to then get as close as she can and be like, somebody help get him back on the ship. Well, I guess that's me. I'm the only other person here. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, the rope, the rope hovers in place, right? Or does it automatically well, tie knots? It follows your commands, yeah. So you can tell it what you want it to do. Can it lift anything? You haven't tried. Rope, rope, rope. Hey, rope. Yo, yo, ropey. It's just kind of swinging back and forth. Come over, rope. Man, this rope sucks. I'm going to kill Bartleby when I You have to tell it what to do, you Hey, rope, that? tie yourself around me. And as soon as you say that, it swings itself over to you and then ties around your chest, under your arms, and then knots itself. <laughs> oh, a little less looser, looser, ropey. Kind of, it kind of gives you some slack. Oh, okay. Now, can you lift me up there, up to the, up to the ship? Uh, do you let go of your pickaxe? I'm still holding out of the pickaxe. Okay, so you start to feel yourself being pulled up. Uh, On the ship side, uh, Salias, you see the rope kind of start to loop itself around this um, uh, little peg that's like on the ship, you know, kind of like for for, um, mass balance. And and it's sort of like looping. It's kind of pulling itself up. The the threads of the rope are are kind of twisting and uh, getting taut and loose. And it's almost like this this kind of undulating uh, living being, but it's uh, pulling itself up and it's it's five feet at a time, five feet at a time. Can I rip my pick out? Yeah, you can rip your pick out. And then you start going up and eventually uh, it kind of pulls coach up uh, to the ship. Right about this time, Jarek and Porto are flying and land on the ship itself just as coach is kind of being pulled up. The the rope uh, unties itself, coils itself and is dormant again. Did you guys see that? Right. I don't think the roof is an option for us. Oh, man. Well, he set off the rune. Mate. You okay, coach? But perhaps it's, it's free now. What? What'd you say? Oh, no. Coach, are you coach, doing okay? Coach is, uh, coach is uh, considered uh, deafened for the next 10 minutes. What? <laughs> Sars is just going to give him, like, the okay sign. Oh, yeah. I'm a little bit sore, but... Uh, Right. I can't hear anything. Hey, you guys, what I miss? Coach blew up. Looks like there's some kind of runes there on the roof of that there building, and they made a big sonic boom, and Coach was flung off the side of the building. Yeah, there's a rune on the, on coach, the ceiling. Coach, you're talking. I got flown, <laughs> I got flown like off. Volume down sign, like, you're really loud, Coach. Like, lower down. Shh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little bit louder. Pointing up. You guys know there's runes on the side of the building. I, I got it. All right. You guys are just hovering. Jack, do you want yeah. to go up there About and try to disarm up? the runes? Yeah. Well, the ship is still there. I think I heard it's a resale value, but uh, I couldn't. I couldn't fly it. I think there was nobody might, there. They must might all need be to here. go down to the floor. See if maybe we can find something down there on that floor level. I'm pretty sure that's where Kishara and all of the other baddies are. Well, that's exactly who we're looking for, isn't Good, it? Let's go there. What? So you fly down to the okay. ground, uh, right about at 30 feet, kind of right uh, a little bit below where you are, uh, you start getting engulfed in fog. Uh, there are patches where there's no fog, uh, but mostly it's foggy and just kind of misty. It's almost like the, the, the sun has gone away, the cloud cover has come in, and now it's uh, almost like a, a very overcast day. Um, the ship goes down, Sarsa is able to maneuver and land it very carefully. A little bit slower. 
And Silas is going to put on uh, mage armor. Okay, on mage armor is cast. Uh, do we see anything that looks like it might be an entrance to this building? Or any signs of anybody else having traversed? Make an investigation check. 16 plus and, 1, 17. And you're looking around the outside of the building? Uh, just the area that we're, I mean, approaching the outside of the building, yes. You do a perimeter sweep of the building and the ground around the building. There's no doors. You're kind of feeling for for traps and for anything. There's nothing. It's just, it's like this kind of square tower, but there's no entrances. Slice, there wasn't nothing in that or book of yours about how to get inside this here building. No, it just said that there were no entrances. The only thing you guys see through the fog, you have about 100 feet visibility. Um, there's a couple of these mangled trees, uh, a bunch of rocks, um, and fog. Well, maybe we should try and uh, get in from the, the roof again. There has to be some reason there's a trap door up there. Am I talking too loud? No, you're I doing think fine. I think that's the right call. You do notice that when you're in an area that does not have fog, it's there's a bunch of vines on the ground. There's like sticks and vines, oh, and that's yeah. considered a uh, difficult terrain. It's almost like they've grown over the rock that's uh, and the sand that's part of that. So there's spikes and, and little twigs and things that if you try to step down inside of it, it makes it a little harder to travel in. So there's either fog where you can't see or vines and twigs where it's hard to walk. Is there anything around here to bash, twist, or pull? <laughs> That's for the key. Oh, man. No, Sarsa, you look back up. One of the trees is a little closer than you realize, uh, than you recognized it before. Oh, dear. Do you guys get the impression that maybe uh, this foliage here is uh, moving just a wee bit? Everybody looks up towards the tree. And just as you do that, you see these two little eyes open up, kind of hollowed out knots inside of the tree. And then this mouth where, you know, uh, bark should be, it kind of creates this open... Kind of open... It's Elias Fireball. It's Elias Fireball. No, I need don't. everybody to roll initiative. Oh, dear. I guess they are aggressive. Oh, no. That's a nat one. I don't have Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I need that on a t-shirt. I don't have Fireball. All right. You see four animated trees approaching you. Back on the boat. Back on the boat. And they are all coming towards you. There is two uh, coming towards you from the side of the tower and two that are approaching towards the tower from the west. What do you guys do? Jarek is up first. Jarek, talk to them. Yeah, you can't sweet talk these plants here. Turn on that old Jarek smolder. Uh, I say in regular common, hello, trees. (laughs) We are friends of uh, Glaive and Janae. Uh, and Kishara, you might know her. We were just looking for directions. Maybe we could rejoin her. Hi, Branch. Yay. Yeah. Uh, that's your free action. Okay. Any reaction? <laughs> they are... <laughs> they kind of stop. They kind of stop for a sec, look very confused, uh, and just keep going. Uh, all right. Don't quite understand, Common. I don't think they're friendly, guys. We should go. So we're near the ship. We could feasibly, it would be feasible to try to get on and get away. I try to determine. Most of you got off the ship. Uh, I'm going to say all of you got off the ship and you've been looking around a little bit. Guys, uh, I think we should get on the ship. Mm-hmm. And I head for the ship. They're just trees. They are not just trees. Get on the ship. All right, Jared gets on the ship. Coach, you're up. We should definitely get back on the ship. Coach is just going to bolt for the ship. Coach gets on the ship. Uh, so I'm like- going to hold my action, though. Yeah. Uh, in case any of the like trees try and grab the ship, like on whatever side I'm on, okay, uh, that I'm trying to hit them off. So All as right. soon as they try and grab the ship. All right, held action. Okay, Solius, it is your turn. Oh, I'm before the trees. Cool. I'll make for the ship, and I will ready. Uh, well, I th- does that use my action to get on the ship? Yeah. Okay, and then I get them. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, no, sorry. Uh, That's just my movement. You, you can use your movement, and then you can. You All still right. have an action. All right, I'll get up on the ship, and then I will firebolt the. Whichever tree is closest to Sarsa. 
Okay, we'll say tree number one. Tree number one. Firebolt! Nope. That's a nat one. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the, the fog makes it very difficult for you to get a, a, a clear direction of where this uh, tree is coming from. It's very disorienting. It's a little bit out of a dream, and the firebolt just goes, kind of goes wide. All right. Now it's the tree's turn. Uh, they are going to... They don't have a lot of movement, um, or they're kind of moving a little bit slower than you guys, uh, but they are moving towards the ship. Uh, tree one is going to come up close and grab the side of the ship. So held action mm-hmm. for Coach. So I take my two warm hammers. Bam, bam. Uh, we're going to do 17 to hit. That hits. And... 11 to hit. 11 misses. So that one hits. <laughs> of course, I roll a 1 on that one. Uh, plus 3. So 4 damage. <laughs> okay. Woo! Nice. No, plus, uh, no, I'm not raging. So, yeah, 4 damage. 4 damage. Okay. Tree 2 comes up, gets to the ship. It is going to use the rest of its movement to get up on the ship and it sees Jarek who's on the ship and it's going to make a slam attack at you. That is a 25 to hit. Mm-hmm. You take 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Woof, it grabs your leg, lifts you up and goes woof, and kind of just like slams you down on the deck. <laughs> Whack. Uh, you fall down. Tree number three is a little further away. It's going to uh, make its way towards the ship. It's about 10 feet away. Can't get there on its turn. And then tree number four is also kind of coming towards the ship. Uh, It's going to try to climb up on the bow and uh, climb over. So it's not quite able to do that on its turn, but the next time it definitely will. It's on the ship on the side. Sarsa, it's your turn. Okay. How far away am I from the ship? I'll say you're about uh, 20 feet. Okay, so I could, with my normal movement, make it over. So I'm going to join the others and make my way over towards the ship. And then the trees themselves, are they all kind of on the same side of the ship? So one's on the bow. That's what I want. That's what I wanted. Uh, One is on the bow. (laughs) Uh, One is on the side where the door is. Starboard or? The starboard, yeah. One is on the starboard side. One is actually on the ship and one is kind of coming towards it on uh, on the other side. Of the side, so okay. it'll probably provoke, I imagine, some kind of attack of opportunity. But I'm gonna try and work my way towards like near the back of the boat, okay, or ship. So you want to um, get on the ship? I want to get on the ship. You're gonna get an attack of opportunity by one of the trees that's right in the path. Sixteen to hit. Uh, that hits. It's gonna deal eighteen bludgeoning damage. Ooh. Ouch. Ouch. My Tempest uh, domain, uh, I'm going to use my Thunderous um, Rebuke. Yep. So they need to make a deck save. Okay. That is a 13. 13. That is not enough. So they're going to take 2d8. It's going to be a uh, 6 uh, lightning damage. And also uh, they get, because it's uh, lightning damage and because of the level that I'm at, they get thrown back 10 feet. Ten feet. All right. So it you push it, it kind of kind of scrapes this tree. Is that the one that was on the ship? It's on the ship. Yeah. So it's can I put? I'd like to try and direct it to push it off the ship ten feet. Yep, you do. Ah. It's not able. It goes (laughs) kind of falls on the side. (laughs) It gets knocked prone on the side of the uh, ship. Go ahead. Uh, So I took my movement, um, which got the attack of opportunity. So then my action, I want to attempt to fire up the ship and get it moving. You do so. So it's it's activated. Um, you can move the ship on your next turn. Are there more trees on the ship, or was that the only one, the one that she knocked off? Uh, there's one on the ship, and then one that's hanging on. The other two are, there's one that's knocked prone, and there's one that's further away. Gotcha. All right. That's your turn, Sarsa? Yup. Okay, Jarek, top of the round. All right, you're I'm up. scrambling towards Porto. Okay. I'm going to hop on him and take off. So I'm I'm flying him just off to the side of the ship so that I can shoot yep. uh, one of the ones on the ship with Eldritch Blast. Okay, you kind of fly around really quickly, kind of do a quick little tight loop, 
to shoot the Eldritch, Eldritch Blast. Oh, that was a net 20 for a total of 28. Ooh, oh, snap. 28. Oof. So that hits. Ooh, 10. So yes. Damage is 10 plus the other one, 18. So 18 damage, but more importantly, my attention is that I have the Grasp of Hadar Cantrip, which yanks it 10 feet towards me, and Porto is off to the side, so it's going to pull it off of the ship towards me. Okay, great. That's so then, sick. <laughs> <laughs> These, like, tentacles wrap around it and rip it off. So 10 ship. damage plus 18 damage. It's just 18 damage, Oh, oh. and it pulls it 10 feet towards me. And then I get two shots of Eldritch Blast. I'm over level five, so I'm also going to try that against the other yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, so you pull it off the ship. It, the ship is not taken off yet, so it just it goes on the ground. Is it also prone? Yes. The other one, I rolled a... Uh, well, actually, that would be eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> eleven misses. All right. That one's fine. The other one's off the ship. And I'm hovering on Porto. Yeah. All right. Actually, I'll hex. I have bonus action. I will hex the one that's still on the ship. Okay. And I'll impair, I don't know, dexterity. <laughs> Coach. Coach is going to say, oh, guys, I have a thing. Use the thing. Uh, what, what thing? Hold on. Hold on. And I'm going to try and, like, focus on the earth and the plants. And I'm going to cast plant growth. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try and, uh, like, like, basically it makes all the plants... Um, like overgrown, even more so than they are. Uh, and every four feet of movement they spend, they move one foot. Mm. So anything that is currently off the ship is like, can't move very much. They yeah. can move like a maximum of like 10 feet. They have 20 feet movement, so. Oh, so even, they can move five feet Five each. feet, okay. <laughs> Boop. Also, they are plants. Yeah, I wasn't so. going to bring that up. <laughs> but plants can be wrapped up by other plants. I know, but what happens to the plants we're fighting? <laughs> Did they grow? I think is the question. <laughs> it's giant. They, Did you just give them extra appendages? So, so, okay. So, what's the range of this? Is, is it like every fifty feet? So, every plant that's oh, in that so area, it's uh, all normal plants. All normal plants within a hundred foot radius, centered on a point, become thick and overgrown. Okay. A creature moving through the area must spend four feet of movement for every one foot. So, there's two. Uh, awaken trees on the ground. Another one is on the bow of your ship. Another one is making its way towards uh, Coach. Channels his kind of dwarven earth energy that he has now uh, been in touch with. And uh, this feeling comes over you that you're sor- sort of in touch with this this part of you that you haven't had before. And uh, all of the vines and twigs that are um, uh, that are on the ground actually start blooming new vines and other green sprouts pop out uh, brighter and fresher than the ones that are on the ground before. Boom, baby. Even the trees themselves, uh, because they were regular trees and they got awakened by a spell, um, they start to sprout and intertwine and tangle themselves. Uh, The tops of their heads and their arms start to grow and bloom and they're like ah, ah, and they they start to have these vines kind of crawl over them so three of them are just ah, oh, kind of uh, held down uh, one of them is sort of on the bow of the ship and its head and <laughs> arms start to grow and it's like ah, ah, and it kind of looks at its hand and it uh, uh, that makes it lose a grip and it ah, kind of falls down <laughs> and it starts to get overgrown in uh, plants and, and trees as well. Look so. how beautiful you are. <laughs> Bonus action, I'm going to hit it. <laughs> you have to get off the ship. Oh, did it fall off the ship? Yeah. Oh. Is there one mm. still on the ship? Or it's no, nope. that's, that's nope. all. That's, all right. They're all off the ship. I told you we were friends of the plants. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> let's do this. Get, out, get us out of here, Sarsa. Okay, well, back to the roof. Yet. It's it's Celia's turn. That was just my free action. Yeah. Okay. I will, just because I can, I'm going to go ahead and fire a firebolt at one of the prone ones, mm-hmm. which I do believe I get to do with advantage. Yep. Which means that I get to use my elven accuracy. Yep. So just for fun, I'm going to do that. Okay. <laughs> so, with advantage. And then I'll reroll that one. And that's a natural 20. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> And it'll hit for a lot, probably. Celius, fire ball. Bolt! Pay attention! That's 23 fire damage. Ooh. Burn, From my burn, tiny burn. little cantrip. Just go All right. fast. 
It's looking pretty hurt. One of the ones that is overtaken, and it's like, ah, and it lights on fire. So now you see this tree is lit on fire, and there's a couple of the vines and everything. It's like, ah, ah, ah. I I held my book, guys. It worked. The tree that's on fire is going to try to move. So it's going to get up and use half its movement, which is just two feet. (laughs) And then it's going to just basically stand up. Uh, The the rest of the trees, I'm going to say, they're they're basically like spending their turn to uh, try to get these vines. They try to like pull... Uh, you know, the vines and stuff off of them and they start kind of like like if you're covered in a cobweb, that's kind of what they're doing. They're just like, ah, get this thing <laughs> off of me, little gnats and stuff. Grow so that's cookies. what they're doing. Um, they're not able to really get close to the ship because they have very little movement due to uh, Coach's uh, spell, plant growth. Yes. And now it's now it's Sars's turn. Um, she's going to pilot that ship and try to get them as far away from those trees. So we're going, we're going up. Okay. Starting from the bottom, now we... uh, (laughs) You fly up, and the natural kind of um, gusts from the ship start pushing some of the fog away. Um, As you guys are going up, you go up 10, 20, 30. The fog is going away. Um, You notice about 100 feet, because you have excellent perception. Actually, make a perception check, Sarsa. Ooh, okay. That's and nice. this is one of those like glass bottom boat, you know, so so it's meant to be sort of like a tourist caravan for the royal family and the royal. Um, uh, so that's 15 for my perception. The, this is the same ship that like carried a bunch of towns members from Emberbrook away from Emberbrook when it was being destroyed. So it can fit a, a bunch of people and there's little glass uh, bottom areas on the bottom. So you can actually see down about 100 feet away from the tower there is a five-foot-wide hole in the ground. Do you not? There, there's a hole over there. Maybe maybe that's how we get in. You want to go down a hole in the ground? Seems about on par with all the crazy things we've been doing over the last few days. That didn't work out for us great last time. And as you're going higher, the fog sort of seeps back in. Covers it up. I don't want to go back down there. Those trees. We are running out of time. I know. I know. And... Kishara definitely knows we're here now after that boom. Perhaps she'll think we're dead. I'm getting really good at reading lips. <laughs> Jarek, what do you think? I, I, we gotta do something. Looks like that's our only option. We're going to the hole. Coach, you love holes. What? <laughs> you love holes in the ground. <laughs> holes in the... Coach gra- is still partially oh, deaf. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys, the pantomime is. Do you want to? You're gonna for the sake of time. I'm gonna say you land far enough away. The trees are are very slow. You're able to land kind of on the other side of the hole. You all jump out. Um, they're still far enough away, and their movement is uh, slowed. So you're right there in front of this big hole in the ground, five foot diameter. Hey. Five foot diameter. All, all the way across. Yeah. 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 <laughs> five foot diameter. All right. Uh, so who's going first? I go in. Me? Yeah, I thought so. You don't even have dark vision. I'll go first. I already went in. I agree. I should Jared go jumps first. In. <laughs> then does co- Porto fit, or is he kind of stuck? Porto does not fit. He's big. Porto, yeah, deactivate. I said I, was, I said I was gonna go uh, jump in. Coach jumps in. <laughs> we should have given him a sending stone. <laughs> well, I'm Jared gonna yell one. down the whole. Coach. 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 Hey, are you okay? What's what's down there? Jarek has one. We are both in there. Oh, you're in there too. Get in the hole. Is, is Jarek okay? Is he sending? Are you sending stoning me? Uh, are you stoning me? He's not responding to you right now. Um, I would have actually just. I wouldn't have like jumped down a dark hole. Yeah. Uh, I would have used the rope to try and like climb down. Uh, it's fifty feet, right? Mm-hmm. So I can go to down quite yeah. a ways. Yeah. If, if when, when we go down the rope, yeah. what are we seeing at the bottom of 50 feet? Uh, what do you notice is that uh, when you get in the hole about 10 feet down, it starts to go at an incline. Okay. Uh, and it is very slick. It's kind of muddy. And you start sliding. Woohoo! Do you let go of the rope? It's longer than 50 feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen out of the Goonies. I've always wanted to do this. Yeah, 
same thing. Mm -hmm. That's why you're not responding to the sending stone because all you hear is. <laughs> what? Should should we follow them? Well, I didn't hear a thud, so I think that's. I'm going to use my sign. pick to slow me down a little bit. Okay. It's dark and slimy, um, and you're sliding down kind of slowly now. <laughs> it's like it's like using uh, when you're in a. Uh, water slide at a theme park, mm-hmm. you know, at a water park, and you're kind of like put, putting all of your your hands, and you're like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're now you're going a little slower. Okay, can't really. You can see a little bit because you have dark I've vision. Dark vision yeah. um, so it's just kind of dark earth, slimy mud slide. All right, when she doesn't hear a thud or a response from Jarek, Sarsa will go. <laughs> Sarsa okay. leaves on the ship and just goes. <laughs> no, no, she'll she'll like. I guess dock the ship as best yeah. as she can, floating okay. above this hole, yeah. and uh, drop herself down. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Slide. Salius so is going to climb down the rope, and when he gets to the end, he's going to say, "Rope, let go." You're sliding down a dark. Slimy, muddy hole. <laughs> Must be a and Tuesday. All, all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of all plop on top of each other. <laughs> hey, I was going slow. Oh, Coach was going slow. So as wasn't Coach is he going the first slow, one in? no, no, he no, was the second was. one. So Jarek, <laughs> I land way before him. I'm so like, Jarek what the? plops down, <laughs> and then Coach is going slow. So he's kind of skittering along. Then Sarsa hits Coach. D4 damage. <laughs> Uh, make a dexterity or... check to see if you hold on to your pick. Let's say 13. Okay. You managed to barely hang on, so now you're just kind of blocking <gasps> Sarsa. Um, so I take D4 damage? You take four. Yeah, yeah, you take D4 That's damage. a full four. Okay. Dang it, coach. Four Watch points the spikes. Of the spikes. Piercing damage. Then Salias comes along. <laughs> <laughs> make, another, uh, make another dexterity check. Look out. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, 18. Okay. You're, now you're just kind of blocking. <laughs> do, I, do we take... And now... Do I take Sarsa another D4? more D4 damage. No, I, I, I've said you have gotten at a point, like, you land and you're able to... Maneuver away yeah. from his spike Not armor. yet, yeah. Rope, so. grab coach! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Slow me down. You guys, you up there? We're a bit of a clot right now. We'll be right down there, Jarek. All right, well... I'll loosen the pick. <laughs> okay, you loosen the pick, and then the rest of you start sliding down. And then you land on top of Coach, boom, and then you take D4. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> coach, what, I mean, you got all these spikes on. Oh, that's one. Okay, I thought you rolled a four again. It's kind of my okay. thing. Uh, you guys look up, and you're in this <laughs> underground cavern. Um, there are some lights, there's some sconces with torches on the side. Uh, it is in a, uh, a room about 15 by 10 feet, um, and you hear the faint sound of voices coming from a further catacomb uh, through a uh, hallway. Can we make out, like, what kind of voices those are? Can we discern them at all, or is it just there's clearly it's, some it's, sort of noise? It's kind it? of an echo. It's a very echo, echo uh, cavernous um Layer, and um, you hear a female voice. You guys hear that? Yeah. We should. We should sneak up. I definitely hear a lot of things. Do you? No. <laughs> Sars is just gonna motion like, shh. Okay. And listen as much as she can. You're gonna have to get closer. I'm gonna sneak looks- forward. I will also see Not a disadvantage. Because right. of mithril armor. Okay, both Must of you nice. make a stealth check. Coach, you have And back. I've got my fancy <laughs> new boots. Silas will stay back with Coach. <laughs> Billy, nope. 14 for Jarek. I make no sound, so. That's. Uh, with your boots of elven kind, is that right? Well, that's 13 plus. 13 is what you needed. So So 15. Okay. So 13 is what you needed. Um, So both of you very stealthfully sneak forward, and then this is what you hear. I 
don't care how quickly he wants them. I'll have the construct shipped to you in less than a week. Then tell your master he can wait. Time works strangely in the Feywild, and Lord Metre must understand that I have pressing personal matters I need to wrap up in Marcasia. I don't owe him anything. We are united only in our common interest when the goals are aligned. He should know. Being a member of the Platinum Syndicate means you have to work with other members. At that moment, you guys are right in the hallway. And out of the shadow, you just hear, Hello, pretties. <laughs> and he <laughs> grabs you. <laughs> he tries to grab at you. I need both of you to make a dexterity save. Uh, that's a four for me. 21. Sarsa is <laughs> grappled. All of these snakes and moving kind of tendrils go around you. <laughs> and then Jarek <laughs> kind of ducks under and deftly maneuvers away. Which way are you going? Are you going further up the hallway or are you going back towards the others? Uh, well, I'm just out of his grasp because I'm not going to leave her. I guess towards the others, though. Okay, so you just kind of move back a little bit. Mm -hmm. He has Sarsa, and he pulls out a blade and says, No false moves there, boyo, or I'm going to slit her pretty little throat. Oh, you think it's pretty, eh? I will cast Command on him, and he will make a saving throw. See, wisdom saving throw. Beat 16. He has advantage. Why? <laughs> Is he Yuan T? Yuan T. Yuan T. Wisdom. Why not Yuan Coffee? It's a dirty 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, dang. <gasps> I don't think so. Uh, Sarsa has very little regard for her own well being, so I'm definitely casting Thunder Wave. <laughs> Before. Well, before oh you do that, <laughs> before you do that, he says, Neshotas, they're here. They're in the chamber. Do I hear and that? Yes. We're going to, uh, a motion for okay. Coach to. At that moment, Sarsa casts right. Thunder Wave. And I'm sorry, it's going to hit Jerick yeah. as well. <laughs> she just doesn't like being pinned. Jerk. So he's got to make a con save. Jerick's mind is like, I better cast command before she casts Thunder Wave. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is she, knows what's, she knows what's coming. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> he it's knows. basically just like a knee jerk, but she's only casting it as a level one. Like the goal is not to Get away from me. Not him out. It's just to, she wants to push him back. Okay. He uh, has advantage, so he, he, can't, he uh, rolls a 15. On a con save too? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Uh, 15, Pit master. 15 saves, but he still takes uh, 2d8, uh, okay. half of that. So he would take, that's 11, so he would take 5 damage. Uh, lightning, or sorry, thunder damage. Kind of blast of thunder. Uh, he's able to hold his grasp on you. It also hits Jarek. So do you need to roll two? Uh, yeah. yeah. 16. Yeah, you save. So you so only five damage yeah. from Sarsa. This is going great. <laughs> Listen, I just took like five damage from Coach, just you. like smacking <laughs> into me. So this is this is par for the course right now, buddy. Coach ate me once. Yeah, <laughs> and you tasted <laughs> terrible. We are our own worst enemies. <laughs> it's true. You guys hear this thunder, and then you see the forms of uh, Jarek, Sarsa, and this other large uh, uh, humanoid uh, fall down. Um, at this moment, uh, another yuan -ti, this large snake-looking guy, this, this uh, lower half snake in a cobra head body, slithers forward in the, in the tunnel and says, No false moves! Or you all be killed before the mistress can talk to you. She wants to see you. We heard you were coming. I see you found the glyph of warding on the top of the tower. Get up and come towards the center chamber. Then we made the power. We're still running. Okay. <laughs> do, 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 do. Now you have. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's happening here? You just see Sarsa with, like, a knife at her throat. He kind of takes a deep breath. 
The mistress would like to see you. Come towards the center chamber, well, or else we'll, we'll kill you all. Well, I don't want to see her. Drop your weapons right now. You see Sarsa is being held at knife point uh, with uh, the pitmaster's dagger. Mm. Don't try anything. What? Get up. What? And move forward. Just, I wave coach up. What Come on. Say? We're going to go over there. What? Come this, on. This seems like a bad idea. We could, and we he could kinda, fight. He, he looks at you and he's saying, what, what? He's like moosh, moving his hands like, get up. <laughs> pointing, move forward. And, and he does little fingers like walkie walkie, but he doesn't have fingers. He only has snakes. <laughs> it's so snakes. it's like these two little snakes like walking. He's like, I walk. <laughs> He's still on the ground. Oh. <laughs> He's on the ground holding Sarsa. Coach is looking at the rest of his teammates for like some direction. Like, are we doing this? Okay. We're nodding. Oh. As as we still okay, I guess. This, uh, seems, okay. this seems foolish. You guys get up. Sarsa is still being held. The pit master holds out his snake, sneaky hands and motions for you to give him your war hammer. And it over. What? <laughs> put, <laughs> put hammer in my hand. I mean, I've got sort of snakes. Did you know that you have snake hands? He just grabs it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it takes it. Oh, yeah. I have two. <sighs> kind of points down to the ground. Okay. Motions you forward. I'm dropping it. Why are we doing this? Uh, the other snake guy kind of uh, looks at Jarek and he says, put, put it on the ground. Put, put your sword on the ground. They're outnumbered. Mm, I pull up the sword and drop it. Because he has Sarsa in a chokehold with a knife to her neck. Eh. <laughs> That's fair. All right. It's not the worst place she's ever been. This is also true. You come in. And you, what you see is a large round room. It's In the center is a giant pillar, about 60 feet tall and 10 feet in diameter. About It's wrapped in these vines, fairly fresh looking, fashioned into some sort of ladder. And the whole tower is slowly revolving. It's like stone layer on stone layer. In the center of the pillar, there is an opening about three feet tall by two feet wide. And inside this sort of carved uh, nook is the combined curio device, which you've identified as the God's key. It's a vertical, uh, it's kind of latched in vertical, rotating around slowly with the pillar, almost as if it's locked in place, glowing with a purple glow. Near the top of the pillar are various runes symbols that you can recognize if you want to try um, and there's graphic panels um, frescoes underneath each symbol as it goes around we'll just say you're kind of like looking because you have some time as it's rotating uh, you see the following symbols a hammer a moon a tree a flame a star a skull a sun a snake and a gem. The snake icon, as it's rotating around, is lit up. And on top of the pillar, surrounded by a nest of vines and snakes, stands Kishara. She's modestly dressed, and in her human form, arms outstretched. And in front of her is a large, clouded version of a serpent with an ethereal glow surrounding its head and its body. It's not there, but it kind of looks like it's there. It's almost like a hologram, if you guys knew what a hologram was. But it's, uh, it's sort of a projection of what this thing is. And if it was in the chamber, it would fill up the entire chamber. It is massive. It's it is, Dendar! It is, yeah, you've identified this as probably ah. Dendar. Yeah. Is this large, fanged, uh, gigantic being? It's not actually there, but is being projected. And this is a entity unlike anything you guys have ever seen. Just 
kind of swirling its head around, kind of waving back and forth, looking at Kishara. And she stops for a second and puts her hands down and looks down and says, Why did you have to come here? You didn't think we were going to come here? No, I thought you might. That's why I put the warnings up. But I... I really wish you would just listen to reason and and join my cause. To destroy the world. I'm not destroying the world, Sarsa. Do you even know what you're summoning there? Do you know do you know what you're calling on? I have been cursed for the last thousand years, and I am calling upon my my God to help me reform and become a deity that I deserve to be. Every Yuan-Ti strives to become a better version of themselves, and I have reached the time of my final form. My ascendance is at hand. Um, miss? And Silius kind of like raises his hand, <laughs> like he's in school. Um, uh, miss, are you trying to turn into the that giant snake, Dendar? Are you trying to turn into Dendar? Of course I will not be able to find the form of Dendar, the Night Serpent. I I will not be able to reach that, but he can grant me the lifting of my curse. And your curse is is what? Yes, we missed this part. To be stuck in this form, in this human... uh, She wants to be a snake. Sarcophagus, my true nature, is to break free, and, and by doing this, I will have the power to awake many, many other yuan and transform you know, other people. you could have just gotten a gym membership like a normal person. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> if, if you want to be a snake, I could do that for you. This is beyond your understanding, my dear sorcerer. I understand more than you might think. Yes, well, none of this would have been possible had you not found the curios. Before all of that, I was simply in the matter of, in the matter of arms trade. I had these constructs made, and I was going to sell them to the Dragonborn so they could help me take over different parts of the realms. Different parts of the realm. I heard it. I heard it. I, I can hear again. Welcome back, Coach. Oh Thank man. You. Oh, that was that was something else. Woo. She kind of looks at you weirdly, and then kind of like keeps going. As soon as you found the curios. Everything changed. I knew from my research this was the one way I could lift my curse. So things changed and I knew that I had to allow you to help me. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. I really do mean that. And by turning you all into yuan Ti pure bloods, you will become my generals in my army. And from my Acacia we will take over the rest of the realms. Okay, okay. And uh, all the realms? What's the deal with this uh, Platinum Syndicate? They are friends or what? In order to transform you, first you have to die. No, thank you. Kill them. And then the pit master and the other guy draw their swords Pitmaster has the knife kind of coiling around the knife and it's right at Sarsa's back. And he says, Soon you'll be one of us. And stabs you. 